Hey gang, we are in East Harwich, Massachusetts today. Beautiful day. Just coming down from Cape Cod. We're kind of part of this whole Cape Cod experience. So bringing you along. And we're at Evergreen Cemetery. And I had to make a stop here on the way out to visit a woman that is very, very, very remarkable. And I'm going to guess that none of you have heard of her. Maybe one out of 50,000. <laughs> we'll see. Put it in comments. But if you watch on YouTube, I've got a secret. And I watch that and I watch what's my line, you know, when I want to, some uh, jolly old laughs. And I watched this one show and this woman appeared, her name Lois. And what's her secret? Her secret was she jumped out of an airplane, you know, parachuting, and the parachute didn't open, but she survived. So this, as many of you know, I've had, I had to jump out of an airplane, not because I wanted to, you know, the warplane story where the, uh, but my, thank God my chute opened because where I landed, it wasn't going to be like her ending. She landed in a giant lake. Anyway, she was on the show. It was amazing, and she's buried here. So let's take a walk, and I will tell you her amazing story of survival. She was in this area living, growing up. Her name, Lois Ann Frotten Rooney. She graduated from Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School on Cape Cod back here in 1960. Look at this cool gym shoe. Just notice this here. Isn't that beautiful? A little moss growing on there. So yeah, Lois is here and on July 18th, 1962, she's 20 years old and She's engaged to be married. Her fiance's name is John Burke. He's from West Yarmouth. And deciding to celebrate their engagement, of course, this is John's idea. Hey, let's go skydiving. And Lois had never done that before. And she's like, okay, I'm up for it. So they go to this small field out here Cape Cod Airfield, thinking it would be a unique way to commemorate their engagement. The couple selected a late Wednesday afternoon after Lois worked her job as a telephone operator in Hyannis. They got into a single engine Cessna 182, and by the way, that's a great plane for its small size. And they took off from the airfield at around 5.25 p.m. You know, in the evening, it's nice because the winds are down and, well, it's kind of like the people in the balloons. It's kind of, it's kind of a good time to go in the evening. So on the first pass over the airfield, John jumps and he lands safely just a few minutes later. And he's down there and he's looking up. And he's like, where's Lois? And he's wondering, and he's a bit nervous. Now, Lois is a bit nervous about making her first jump, understandably. In those days, nothing was kind of, you know, they didn't have the training like they have today. She finally got out of the airplane. Now, as soon as she got out of the airplane, she starts tumbling. She starts spinning, and of course she's trying to open that parachute and it's getting all tangled in her legs. And she was unable to free it. She was finally able to free it, and, and just imagine, they say it was about 100 feet from the water, witnesses, that the chute finally partially opened. She landed in this giant lake called Mystic Lake, they said she made a terrific splash. Well, this was according to a 14-year-old witness, and I wouldn't think that they would be exaggerating. And she survived. Unbelievable.
a man named Connell ran to get his family speedboat while another man named Fred Whitley, who was fishing nearby, sped to the rescue. And her fiance, John Burke, blissfully from the airfield. He thought she was dead. Of course, when she hit the water, is when he ran towards the lake. In the meantime, the parachute instructor, he parachuted right after her and into the water he went and what a hero he supported Lois and kept her above kept her head above the water. Now the spot where she landed was about they say 20 feet deep and it had a muddy bottom. And the fact that she hit the water in a lucky position, you know, in a sitting position, really probably saved her life. Lois later said that she realized that she was falling and there was nothing she could do. So she curled up in the fetal position and she said she blacked out. So based on that, you have to wonder by the grace of God or some other force that that parachute decided to come free at the last possible microsecond. She was rushed by ambulance to the Cape Cod Hospital. She was dazed and she kept asking, what did I do wrong? Was it my fault? Well, she was still in a quite a state of shock. It was quite an ordeal. Lois broke three of her five lumbar vertebrae, her nose. She had various cuts and contusions. She spent four to six weeks in a back brace. And it is said she was in good spirits. She had a press conference. It was like the following day at the hospital. And I remember on the show, I remember that she said, this is the last jump. This is, this is the first and last jump I'm ever making. And she never parachuted again. So they got her on the game show. And she, it was really funny to watch the four panelists who was, let's see, Bill Cullum, uh, Jane Meadows, it's the other ones. Uh, one of them rotated, but then Henry Morgan was the other one. He was a piece of work. Get kind of honorary sometimes. It was quite the story, quite the show, and I had to pull it out and do the story. I really wanted to come here and see her grave. Well, Lois became Mrs. John Burke on November 10th of that year at the Church of the Immaculate Conception in Brewster. And nine months later, the daughter and only child. After a 10 year marriage, Lois and John divorced, sadly. But she later got married to an Ed, Ned Rooney. Edward Ned Rooney. Now they lived in Marston Mills until Ed's death, 1995, and Lois passed away about 10 years later. Acute myocardial version. In addition to her daughter, she left two grandsons, Thomas and Robert Higgins, who would later produce great-grandsons Bradley and Carson. And here we are at the family plot of the Roonies. And there are some others here, but right here we have Lois's 
Lois's name inscribed on the back of the family plot marker right here. I'll take a quick look on this side. So this is Frotten. So this would be her parents. So that's her maiden name. Thought this was the, the Rooney family plot, but it's the Frotten family plot. So she's with her parents and her family. So June 26, 1942, November 3rd, it looks like, 2004. And hopefully that rose will, hopefully that rose will stay on there. <laughs> and you know what? I just looked down and I just noticed this. Oh, it's a little tiny marker. Look at that. Lois Ann Rooney. 1942 to 2004. Well, Lois A. Rooney, Frotten Rooney, rest in peace.